Hello everyone, welcome to Tech of the Day. Today we're gonna discuss about single sign-on and Azure Active Directory. We're gonna explore different options available for SSO and uh, what is SSO, how you can achieve it, what is uh, what are the best practices and uh, what are the cons and pros of those uh, methods available outside. Let's get started. So first of all, I hope all, all of you know uh, what is SSO? Simple authentication mechanism allowing you to access multiple applications with single identity. And what does that mean actually? For big companies, you really need a single identity authentication mechanism so that you can control all the applications, authentication system, and when some of the employees leave your organization, you can just disable uh, their uh, authentication uh, right after they leave it leave the organization so single sign-on adds security and convenience when users sign on to applications in azure active directory uh, we have uh, with single sign-on user sign in once with one account to access domain joined devices company resources software as a service applications and web applications after signing in the user can launch applications from office 365 portal or azure active directory without single sign-on user must remember application specific passwords and sign in to each application it staff needs to create and update user accounts for each application such as Office 365, Box, whatever you have or for all those applications you need to manage application specific passwords. So uh, single sign-on is uh, really good for big uh, organizations even uh, smaller ones uh, to maintain uh, authentication services. Now uh, about me, uh, I'm the Sharma uh, six years of experience with dotnet working with deloitte now if you want to follow me you can search me on uh, twitter the nk sharma or instagram or facebook or youtube my uh, youtube channel is tech of the day so please do like share and subscribe so what are the op options available what do we have as a single sign-on methods so we have OpenID and uh, OpenID Connect and Auth, SAML, password based, linked, disabled, integrated Windows authentication, header based. These are available single sign on methods. We will discuss them one by one and discuss their pros and cons. And why should we use as, uh, one or a specific method? And we will also go through um, how you can choose which one to use. Before we continue, we will. I, I just want to make it clear that I have another video on OpenID Connect and OAuth about implementing it uh, using .NET uh, Core and C Sharp. So if you want. If you are only interested in uh, implementing OpenID Connect and uh, OpenID Connect authentication using a uh, Azure Active Directory and SSO, so I have another video for that. Please check uh, the link above, or uh, please check my other videos. So, what is Open Identity and OAuth? The OAuth 2.0 authorization code grant can be used in apps that are installed on a device to gain access to protected resources such as web APIs using the Microsoft Identity Platform implementation of OAuth 2.0. So you can add sign-in and API access to your mobile and desktop apps. <coughs> Uh, the authorization code flow begins with client directing the user to authorize endpoint. In this request, the client requests the OpenID offline access 
uh, and read permission from the user some permissions are uh, admin restricted for example writing data to an organization directory by using directory read write or all those permissions and you for that you need a tenant client id response to, um, scope OpenID Connect extends OAuth 2.0 authorization protocol to use as an authentication protocol so that you can do single sign on uh, using OAuth. OpenID, OpenID Connect introduces the concept of an ID token, which is a security token that allows the client to verify the identity of the user. The ID token also gets basic profile information about the user because OpenID Connect extends OAuth 2.0 apps can securely acquire access tokens which can be used to access resources that are secured by an authorization server. The Microsoft Identity Platform Endpoint also allows third-party apps that are registered with Azure Active Directory to issue access tokens for secured resources such as Bing APIs. So for modern apps, uh, we should use uh, OpenID OAuth 2 because uh, it takes, it handles uh, most of the problems we might face uh, during these days and it's easy to implement. Uh, when we are developing a new or modern applications, we should always go for OpenID Connect. I will uh, have another video as I already said about OpenID Connect and implementing it using .NET Core C Sharp. So please uh, stay tuned for my other videos. Next is SAML SSO. SAML SAML uh, Active Directory Azure Active Directory authenticates to the application by user using the user's Azure AD account. SAML based single sign on uh, is supported for applications that use uh, SAML 2.0 for WS Federation. But what is SAML? SAML Security Assertion Markup Language is an open standard for exchanging authentication and authorization data between parties in particular between an identity provider and service provider. SAML is an XML based markup language for security assertion. So uh, SAML is simply uh, an old uh, way of authenticating using SSO using XML based uh, uh, requests. Then third is password based SSO. Choose password based when the application authenticates with username and password. Password with single sign on enables secure application password storage and reply using a web browser extension or mobile app. The method uses the existing sign in process provided by the application but enables an administrator to manage the passwords. It can be used cloud and on premises both. With password with sign on, user sign into the application with uh, username and password. An application doesn't support SAML single sign on protocol or OpenID Connect. Then you can choose uh, password based SSO. An application authenticates with user password instead of access token and headers. Uh, that's the main uh, advantage or disadvantage with this. Uh, how authentication works for uh, password based SSO. To authenticate a user and application, Azure Active Directory retrieves the user's credential from directory and enters them into the application's sign on page. Azure AD securely passes the user credentials via a web based browser extension on mobile app. The process enables an administrator to manage user credentials and doesn't require users to remember their password. So, 
this is simply password based but uh, it is automated so user doesn't need to uh, user doesn't need to remember their passwords another one is uh, linked and disabled which are not that much important but this, this one integrated windows authentication sso is really important and it's used for on premises only choose iwa single sign on for applications that use integrated with Windows authentication or claims of your applications for the application proxy connectors use kerberos uh, constraint delegation kcd to authenticate users to the application so this is uh, used for the desktop applications basically application pro or on premises uh, application proxy provides single sign on to applications that use uh, either way or claims aware applications choose a windows authentication single sign on mode to provide single sign on to an on premises app that authenticate with either way the <coughs> the diagram if you see here the it explains the flow when user access an on-premises application that uses IWA the user enter URL to access the on-premises application through an application proxy the application proxy redirects the request to Azure AD authentication services to pre-authenticate at this point Azure AD applies any applicable authentication and authorization policies such as multi-factor authentication. If user is validated, Azure AD creates a token and sends it to the user. The user passes the token to application proxy. Application proxy validates the token and retrieves the user principal name UPN from the token. It's then sends the U request the UPN and the service principal name SPN to the connector through a daily authenticated secure channel. The connector uses KCD negotiation with the on-premises AD impersonating the user to get a Kerberos token to the application. Active Directory sends the token to the for the application to the connector. The connector sends the original request to the application server using Kerberos token it received from AD. The application sends the response to the connector which is then returned to the application proxy service and finally to the user. So then user is authenticated. So it has around uh, 7 to 8 steps uh, which, which are used to authenticate uh, a user for on-premises applications then the last but not the least header based SSO header based SSO works for applications that use HTTP headers for authentication this sign on method uses the third party authentication service called ping access a user only needs to authenticate to Azure AD only. Choose header based single sign on when application proxy and ping access are configured for the application. So simply uh, your application uh, is authenticated based on the header you send. This is used on prem for on premises only. And how do you decide making decision which uh, protocol to use as i already said open id connect and oauth are the mostly used uh, authentication mechanisms so if you are developing a new application then you can directly say open id and oauth if you are not developing the new application are you ready to configure single sign on for an existing app if yes then you have to decide if it's cloud or on premises if it's cloud then you can choose saml 
does your support only in condition if it supports uh, SEML. If it doesn't support SEML, then you choose password based. And if you if you don't want to authenticate using password, then you choose disabled. So this is the last one if you can choose. Are you uh, is the app already set up for SSO with another IDP? If yes, then choose linked. If no, then choose disabled. In this case, if your application is not on cloud, if it's on premises, then does your app support a SML, SAML based protocol? If yes, then choose SAML. If no, then does your app authenticate with IWA then choose IWA if you authenticate with HTTP headers then choose header based if your app authenticates with username and password then you can choose password based so simply this diagram using this diagram you can decide which one to use So this was uh, this was uh, this video was about uh, only uh, SSO and uh, available mechanisms. Of course, everyone knows that OpenID and OAuth are the mainly known uh, 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 mechanism or widely used mechanism. Uh, I will have another video for them, and I also have another video uh, about uh, authentication and authorization without SSO for simple applications so I will create two videos um, using .NET Core one for uh, S, uh, OpenID Connect SSO and another one for authentication and authorization without SSO and .NET Core 3.1 so stay connected and thanks for watching see you bye